Hello everyone, Sir Gantelot here again. This is the first of a two-part lesson to help you prepare for your Project Management Professional Exam, your PMP exam. Specifically, we'll be looking at how we can calculate the critical path and determine the float or slack of activities within a project schedule network. This is part of the schedule development process. So where does schedule development fit within the PMI's project management body of knowledge? Well, schedule development lies in the knowledge area project time management and in the process group planning. And as you may know, for all the processes listed in the PMBOK, the PMI states what the inputs to the process are, what the outputs from the process are, and also what the tools and techniques are that you can use in implementing the process. So in this session, we'll be talking about one of those tools and techniques, which is the critical path method. This video is part of a series that I've loaded on YouTube, where I aim to help you slay those project management monsters that plague us on a daily basis. And by monster, I mean management, organization, network, scheduling, and tracking errors. So back to the critical path method, we will be looking at two techniques. In this video, part one, we'll look at a quick eyeballing method that will allow you to answer probably 90% of the likely questions on the network analysis topic that might come up in your PMP exam. In part two, for those remaining 10% of possible questions on network analysis, we'll be looking at the full forward and backward pass technique, and that will equip you to answer, answer any questions that may ask for early, late, start or early late finish as part of the question and that's part two as I say the next video. So we talked about questions that might come up here's an example of one and please don't panic it looks more complicated than it really is. Typically you'll be asked to construct a network diagram it'll give an intro to say that you're a PM on some type of project or other and then it will list all the activities for example, the first activity listed, activity A, a two-day activity, that can start right away. And then the remaining activities will also be listed, like on the second bullet there, activity B, three days, activity C, four days. But it will also tell you where those activities fit in the network by telling you when they can start. And in both of those cases, they tell you that they can start after activity A is finished, and so on with the other activities. And then the question is down at the bottom, a two-part question, what is the critical path and what is its duration? So, of course, to answer that question, we then have to construct the network. And here's an example of the boxes that we'll be using for the activities. By looking at the question, you would have been able to see that this is an activity on node network. So we'll use the precedence diagramming method. And the way that you can spot that is that the activities are listed simply by one letter. They don't describe the activities as, for example, activity A to B, activity B to C, and so on. So the boxes will have the key shown here. Top left will have the ID, A, B, C, etc. Top right, the duration of the activity. Both of those come straight out of the question. And then secondly, early start and late start. For this first part video, we won't be using those two boxes. Okay, so for activity A then, you may recall it was a two-day duration, so there we go. It's activity A, two days, straight out of the question. And then the question for activity B and C, for example, said that those activities can start after activity A is finished, Activity D can start after activity B is finished, and so on. So simply by reading the question and working left to right, we can put in all of those activities as boxes with their durations in relation to other activities there. So there's our full network, pretty straightforward to construct. So how do we determine the critical path? Well, the critical path is the longest duration path through the network the sequence of activities that have the longest total duration. So if we look uh, at that network, we can just look and see that if we follow the path A, C, F, H, and I, that is the longest duration, because that duration is 15 days. 
If we were to go across the middle there, A, C, E, G, I, we would see that the duration is 11 days. If we go across the top, A, B, D, I, we would see that the duration is 12 days. So the longest duration path is that one at the bottom, 15 days. And note that I've emphasized the words in duration, because the longest path in critical path terms is the longest duration, not the path with the most number of boxes in it. Sometimes people think longest path, greatest number of boxes. Well, of course, in this case here, there are two paths, A, C, E, G, I, and the one that we've highlighted, A, C, F, H, I, both of which have five boxes in them. So that's not how you calculate the critical path. It's the longest duration. OK, so we can answer that question. What is the critical path? What is its duration? And as we see, it's A, C, F, H, I, 15 days. So there's our answer there. Now, often you'll then get a follow-on question, maybe the next question or a later one, such as this. Using the network diagram from the previous question, what is the float or slack of activity D? So here's a little tip for you. Don't throw away any scrap paper or crumple it up after you've constructed a network. Keep it, because you may get questions about that same network later. But double check that it is the same network before you use that diagram. Anyway, let's look at this question. How can we calculate float or slack? Again, we're using the eyeballing method here. We don't need the forward pass, backward pass for this technique. And the way that we do this is we calculate the duration of the critical path, which we've done, 15 days, and then subtract from that the duration of the longest path that has activity D in it. In this case, there is only one path that has activity D in it, A, B, D, and I across the top there, so that's what we subtract from the critical path. So the duration of the critical path is 15 days. Duration of the longest path containing activity D is 12 days. And so the float or slack of activity D is 3 days. Very simple, very straightforward. Now, remember, of course, that there is an additional technique. The one that we've just looked at is the quick eyeballing method. You can answer probably 90% of the likely questions on network analysis that will come up. And we've just, just uh, addressed that topic. The next video in the series, part two, in case you get asked to do, determine the early or late start, early or late finish, you then need to use the forward-backward pass technique. And that's what the part two video is for. So watch part two of the lesson, and we'll cover the forward-backward pass technique. Which technique do you use in preference? Well, what I would say is that, in most cases, start off using the eyeball technique, unless in the question it very clearly asks you to identify early or late start, early or late finish. And remember, quick tip again, retain your network diagram uh, scrap paper. You might get asked follow-on questions. Make sure it is the same network before you use it, though. So before leaving, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd also ask you to visit my sponsor, Westall Murray International. Westall Murray is a project management services, consulting, support, and training company. has a very innovative approach to project management in the sense that it balances how you can use project management to support the innovation process. All too often, innovation is stifled by too much project management. On the other hand, you must use project management at the right level to make sure that you bring in your innovation on time and within budget and don't waste the investment you've made in it. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please do come back, look at part two and also at some of the other videos that we have loaded, particularly those that help you with Microsoft project tools, tips and techniques. Thanks again.